Hey, my name is Chavi, and there's two things you don't know about Earth. These nuts. Monster X and Godzilla. In celebration of the release of Godzilla Minus One, supposedly the best Godzilla movie ever, we're gonna be taking a look at two characters from the actual best Godzilla movie ever, Godzilla Final Wars. Specifically, the SH Monster Arts Monster X and the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 2004. So here's hoping that the new movie and these figures aren't gigantic disappointments. We'll talk about that figure when it comes out, but it will be painful for my wallet. Hey, future Jobby here coming at you with a cold this review was filmed before i saw the movie so check out my review if you want and speaking of being painful for your wallet you can find these figures through the link in the description and we'll be looking at godzilla first because monster x for those of you who haven't seen the cinematic masterpiece known as final wars is kind of a spoiler it yeah. seems that with each time i take a look at a new sh monster arts figure they just keep getting more expensive and come with less stuff i mean accessories shouldn't be the end all be all of a figure before that cost, man. You'd hope that you'd get a little more something than this. But if this happens to blow my mind, it should be worth it, right? Well, the painting and the sculpting on this figure is amazing. This thing seems to have been made before Bandai's Dark Ages because everything here looks so on point. It's not the most complex paint job in the world. There's barely any shading here, but the exquisite finely sculpted texture more than makes up for that. And it's not like the spines don't have their fair share of shading, but it does get admittedly a little haphazard by the end of the tail. And as we've kind of previously established, this thing had better justify its cost, and this is a little more becoming of something worth 50% less. But continuing with the positives, this is an almost perfect recreation of Godzilla's more gangly Final Wars design. Looks like he finally hit the gym and laid off the fish cake, which I really ought to do. I can't help myself, I love fish cake. But it's more of a healthy way loss and less of a now, a consistent problem that I've had with plenty of SH Monster Arts figures, check out my playlist, by the way, is the apparent fragility of the ball joints. And the fact that most SH Monster Arts figures are mostly ball joints doesn't quite help. So how does this guy fit? It's not the biggest deal. I mean, ball joints are easily reattachable. But if I'm deep in ball joint heaven, I do not want to be interrupted. At the very least, it's not in a structurally important part like the ankles, which on this figure actually hold themselves pretty well. And based on how long I've been playing with it, fine. I will say, at the very least, it doesn't feel like it comes apart if you breathe on it wrong. There's still a bit of a snap to the ball joint. Really, this is not the worst that I've experienced from SH Monster Arts. Matter of fact, it's actually one of the best. I put this on par with the SH Monster Arts 1954, which is still one of my favorites, both in terms of figure and movie. As long as you don't handle this thing like a complete caveman, I think you'll have a nice time with the feel of this figure. Everything seems solid, which of course results <laughs> i understand that these high-end collectibles aren't primarily meant to be played with but god damn it baby what toy i just want to pick up play and pose Oh! Ball joint at the head. And every ball joint can be a uh, swivel. Keep that in mind before I repeat myself 20,000 times, which I've already done throughout the course of my channel. Anyway, ball joint at the mouth, which allows for some wiggle room. <laughs> Lord help you if you pull on it too hard, though. That tiny ball joint is not the easiest to get reattached. And this is totally my bad, by the way. Sane people would not be tugging on his jaw that hard. Oh. But while the jaw's ripped off, check out the detail on that. That Godzilla spittle looks Delicious! <laughs> Got a separately sculpted tongue and everything. But unlike a lot of SH Monster Arts figures, the tongue isn't articulated as far as I know. So unfortunately, none of that for this guy. And for all the ball joints of this figure, just keep in mind that they're all dumbbell joints, which is just one of these fancy double-ended ball joint stick things, which gives you an incredible range of motion, as you could probably imagine. I'm sure the suit actor wasn't as lucky. Wait, he literally does this in the movie. What am I stupid? The neck is seriously articulate, as are the arms. A 360 rotation. Arm can move out that far. All right, now I'm just being rough on this guy. Arm can move out that far. Bicep ball joint. Bend at the elbow. Also ball joints. Ball joint at the wrist. Nails are really nicely painted, by the way. Do the kids still say on fleek?
Please don't leave me. Ball joint at the chest. And is it just me or does he need some filler material for his titties? Not to body shame the guy, but the majority of the figure does such a great job at hiding the joints. This gap and the resulting boxy look of the chest seems out of place. Or I'm just jealous of these beautiful pectorals. There's a ball joint at the center ball, which allows for a natural amount of rotation and ab crunch and kind of an arcing back, which the spines naturally get in the way of. Not a bad thing. Rogue at the leg. Tight ball joint here, but I'm not complaining. A beautiful spread. You could kind of see how those dumbbell ball joints look if you gaze into the grundle. Double bend at the knee, which once again are a series of ball joints. This joint's not loose, by the way. I just pulled it off to show you. And that ball joint results in a calf swivel, which of course does not exist in nature. Where's the calf swivel? I know you have it here somewhere. Their names are Goji and Pumpkin, by the way. I would die for them. Ball joint at the ankle allows for a fantastic ankle pivot. And of of course, the SH Monster Arch staple, a ridiculously articulated tail. I count 26 ball joints in total, which allows for some beautifully natural curvy poses. Just don't get too carried away. Despite my minor complaints about ball joint integrity, this is one of the most fun experiences I've had opposing an SH Monster Arch figure. Extremely articulated with solid joints, which allows you to recreate scenes from the movie and then some. It's just the shame that you don't get an atomic breath part to display him with. Accessories aren't the end all be all. But for a Godzilla figure that cost this much, at least an atomic breath part, please. I also wish that he was bigger, but I wish that every SH Monster Arts figure was bigger. Size comparison time. Here's Figma Madoka Kaname, Haya Toys Godzilla, and Haya Toys has been cooking the magic square light of peace. My previous review, the Big Mommy Nemesis, and some of my favorite SH Monster Arts Godzillas, which I gotta say, this this guy has joined the ranks of but that's divorced from my ex-wife. From the price. I'd only recommend this to super fans of Godzilla and specifically Final Wars. Or if you're just awful with your money. Check out my Magic the Gathering video, by the way, if you have the time. I should not be talking about overpriced things with the amount I've spent on cardboard. And now we're looking at Monster X. If you ignore his head, kind of looks like my body. <laughs> and this guy's entire existence is a spoiler for Final Wars. Don't say I didn't warn you. Also, go watch it. What the hell are you doing? And this guy is the final threat that Godzilla faces in the movie. And let me tell you, Monster X absolutely eats Godzilla's ass. No, wait, that was something else I saw. Godzilla does not have a good time. He gets dabbed on until he turns the tide. But then something else happens. We'll talk about it. So does this figure properly live up to the climax of Final Wars? Uh, well, the painting and the sculpting on this figure is amazing. God damn, it helps that this guy has a cool design already, and the figure does a virtually perfect job at recreating it. And I suppose some people who have never seen this thing in their life might think this is a little too on the nose. I mean, we get it. Evil skulls. You can definitely cut yourself on this edge. But I suppose it's the early 2000s trench coat loving edgy boy in me. But I think this design absolutely rips. But I would that was the only thing that rips. Once again, we run into the classic SH Monster Arts problem of the structurally questionable ball joint. But again, as long as you're careful, shouldn't be that big of a deal. I also never realized how human he looks. He's even got fully defined abs. It's no wonder this guy kicked Godzilla's ass. The suit must have been way more comfortable. The texture work here is incredible. I love the contrast between the metal looking bits and the bony bits, making me feel a bit bony. Does that make sense? There's even a slight pearlescent finish to the bony parts, which looks really nice. And that head sculpt. Ugh. Or should I say head sculpts? If you're a Godzilla fan and haven't seen Final Wars, what's wrong with you? You might know where I'm going with this. Just as Godzilla's turning the tide against Monster X, he decides he's gonna pull out the hacks and transform into everyone's favorite alien. First thing you wanna do is lift the heads up, and I'm just kidding. Wouldn't that be cool though? SH Monster Arch Kaiser Ghidorah when? Actually, hope that thought that thing would cost $400. My God, why? <laughs> what is it, Bandai? Do you have human blood in the paint or something? Or is it to make up the extra cost for these alternate hands, which are the only accessories included? Well, now the price is justified. The inclusion of these hands are barely justified. The default hands are this and the alternate hands are this. 
What? Whatever shady financial reasons for their inclusion, the hands look great. The figure looks great. And the posability. Well, let's find out. Ball joint at the head. Every ball joint can be a swivel, though you want to be careful. It's a bit tight. Opening mouth. Just the straight hinge joint here. No tiny ball joint to mess with. And the inside of the mouth is a little lacking compared to Godzilla. He doesn't even have a tongue, which is maybe movie accurate. Come to think of it, the teeth on all of his heads looks kind of cartoonish. Listen, I don't mean to make a big deal about the figure's mouth. But when it costs that much and comes with so little, I think I'm justified in wanting hyper-realistic saliva. Zero out of ten would not make out ball joint at his other heads, which could move out of the way to accommodate for some shoulder articulation. Ball joint, by the way. But this can't get enough out of the way for a full 360 rotation, which is fine because the arm could move back that far. I'd even recommend heating up the shoulder joint a little bit because it is a bit overly tight, at least on my copy. Shoulders have a dedicated butterfly joint. Arm moves out that far, leaves a little to be desired. Bicep swivel, bend at the elbow, ball joint at the wrist, ball joint at both the chest and the waist, which allows for a great range of articulation. Swivel here, beautiful crunch, and an arcing back. Ball joint at the hips, and a hinge joint inside that lets it shift down, and that allows for a high kick. And can't move back that far. A uh, pretty good spread. Thigh swivel, double bend at the knee, ball joint at his hyper-realistic human-like feet. Which allows for a beautiful pivot. And finally, protruding from a gaping hole in his ass, this long-ass tail, which has six ball joints running the length of it and two additional ball joints where the tail splits, which fares even worse in the integrity department than the ball joint on the main part. Ugh. But assuming the tail stays intact, which you won't. You could get some fairly natural looking curvy poses, but not as natural or curvy as I would like. And the two tips of the tail aren't posable. They're just sculpted in one way. Could have been a bendy wire for God's sake. So posability here is good, but unexpectedly limited considering this guy's human proportions. I did not expect thick ass Godzilla to be more flexible. And the tail and how it's constructed is a little bit of a letdown. But with that said, you can still get some really nice poses out of him, which would be enhanced with some lightning bolt effect parts. But I guess that's too much for Bandai's tight budget. It also would be nice if this was bigger, but eh. Size comparison time. Hey, here's Figma Madoka Kaname, Haya Toys Godzilla, Magic Square Light of Peace, Mummy. And of course, SH Monster Arts Final Wars Godzilla. So while I love the look of this guy, and I especially like these two figures together, it's an even harder recommendation because what? Again, I'd only recommend it to hardcore Final Wars fans, but if you could only get one, which let's face it, is most likely gonna be the case, Godzilla will not disappoint. But as far as I'm concerned, being a connoisseur of cinema, this display is well worth the money. Thank you so much for your support throughout this year. And now I'll shout out my highest paying members and patrons. Starting with you leader class members. Mr. Porsche, Scarlet Scout 259, Dan, Nathalia, Karen Harlehy, Kag Nanos, Anime Gods of Gaming, Jacobus 21, Mothman, Astro B057, Cam After Dark, Squardzilla, Toy Scourge TV, Cole Taku, John, Breakaway TA, Luxana, Jonas RT, Kamen Rider KFP, and Zelda Gamer LD401. As for my Triple Kiss patrons, Z Naki Shark Z, Smithy Killer, Morris Voices, Gorgongus, Cam After Dark, Kieran Hurlihy again, Dim Some Garbage, Genius Jedi, Proxy Fox, Luxana, Jose Nava, That Meth Addict, Sausage Fiesta, Scarlet Scout, Artist 101, Harry McStrange, Alx Hewitt, Josh Montemayor, Jeff Drown, Nathalia Munoz, Daniel Morris, Cruz Isida, Ken Rodman, Chris Jen, Jawan, Striker374, Mingyi Caesar, Mr. Jenkins, Weed Horse Theo, and Michael McLaughlin. Thank you all so much for your financial support. Couldn't have made it through this year without you. And if you're not a member or patron, please consider it. But it's not necessary at all. You will still get most of my content for free. I'll see you next year. I'm taking a holiday break. And don't worry, it's not going to be as long as the last one. And look out for next year's batch of reviews. And the fail box. Use my hashtag.